If your social media feeds have been littered with old pictures of Woolworths today, you might have wondered what on earth was going on. The phoenix-like rebirth of the High Street store was the subject of many scratched heads earlier and was picked up by plenty of newspapers until someone realised it was unlikely and, in fact, a hoax. Well, tonight we unpick the life cycle of a fake news story, how it's born, how it grows, where it feeds and how it dies. This one was perhaps a fairly harmless combination of wishful thinking, nostalgia, boredom, carelessness. But would you be any better at spotting the next one? The BBC's disinformation correspondent, Mariana Spring, has this report for us. The latest, greatest, ever more spectacular Woolworth Christmas show. Christmas is around the corner and we're all a bit nostalgic for those good old days before the pandemic. So, when a viral announcement on Twitter said that Woolworths was reopening, it was hailed as the news that could save festivities in 2020. Stupendous and amazing value in toys, I'll tell you. On social media, people rejoiced, fondly remembering Pick and Mix and their favourite Woolies treats, and it was splashed across news sites. Only, the viral tweet announcing the relaunch of the UK High Street retailer, which closed its doors back in 2008, was fake. Very, the company that owns the Woolworth brand, confirmed that the relaunch is not happening and that the Twitter account is not real. Fake news about Woolworth's reopening might seem less important than harmful coronavirus conspiracy theories and political disinformation, but actually it reveals a lot about how falsehoods spread and how we can all be susceptible to them. I think this disinformation incident shows us the two really important factors that influence whether people believe false information or not. So one is whether it could grab your attention, and it certainly did that in this instance. But the other is, does it really appeal to your emotions? And we've seen this wave of nostalgia around the Woolworths disinformation tweet that shows that if fake news is able to capture people's emotions, it can be a really powerful driver um, towards misleading information. The original tweet came from an account called at UK Woolworths, which had more than 4,000 followers before it was suspended. It was a new account and not verified by Twitter like most well-known businesses. It linked to a website that was not active and had only been registered hours earlier. Not just that, but it even misspelled the shop's name. In a series of tweets, it claimed Woolworths was here to save the year and that trial stores will open in 2021. Nostalgic social media users shared the hashtag YourWoolworths with their favourite memories of Woolies, and before long, a horde of newspapers and news outlets had written up the story. Woolworths set to return, reported the Metro. Woolworths will open three trial stores, said the Mail. Woolworths set to return to the high streets, wrote the Daily Star. All three news sites later updated their stories. This also highlights the way bad information can be boosted by both social media and by media outlets. If journalists had done the most basic checks, they would never have run the story. Online disinformation spreads fast. But to truly get mainstream, it needs help from politicians, celebrities and media outlets. Newsnight contacted the account in question. Whoever's behind it didn't respond. It may have just been a prank. But it raises a worrying question. If a fake news story about Woolworths can go viral, how easy is it for more harmful falsehoods to spread online like wildfire? Mariana Spring with our report there. Let's just bring you the paper.